So this is example one, Shelby tube problem. And for this Shelby tube sample, so we have moist soil taken from field. As I mentioned, you can measure the total weight and then you can dry the soil sample in the oven to measure the dry weight, 14.98. And the dimension of the Shelby tube is known. So we know the length and the diameter of this Shelby tube. And we're going to calculate these quantities here. Moisture content, two unit weights, porosity and degree saturation. And to solve this using phase diagram, uh, we need to draw the phase diagram and then complete that phase diagram. And before that, so let's look at what's given. So we know the total weight. So this total weight of soil sample is weight of solid plus weight of water. And this is 17.53, so that's given. And then the dry weight, that's weight of solids, 14.98. And then we can calculate the moisture count, the, the weight of the moist or the weight of water. This is 2.55. So that's what you know on the weight side. So we know the total weight weight of solids and weight of water. On the volume side, this dimension, the dimension of the Shelby tube is given, so we can calculate the total volume. It's a cylindrical shape, and we know the length and the diameter, we can calculate the volume. So it's pi d squared over four times the length, which is 40. And this is volume of the Shelby tube, which is the total volume of your soil sample in inch cube. And I'm going to convert this to cubic foot. So one over 12 to power three. So this is inch to foot conversion. And then the total volume is 0.143 cubic foot. So that's what we know. The total weight, weight of solids, weight of water, and then the total volume. And next, as I mentioned, in solving weight volume relationship problem, we need to draw the phase diagram. So I have this phase diagram shown on this slide. There are three phases, solid, water, here. This is a moist soil, so we have three phases. And then the phase diagram, we have two sides, the weight side, And you need, in this problem, it's pound. And then we have the volume side. We're going to use cubic foot. Once we have this phase diagram with correct number of faces, then we're going to complete the phase diagram first. And then we're going to solve all these quantities. Let's put what we know on the phase diagram first. So we know on the weight side, we have the weight of water. 2.55, weight of solids, 14.98, and then the total weight, 17.53. We basically have the weight side cover, so we know all the weights. And then on the volume side, the only thing we know at this point is the total volume, which is the volume of the Shelby tube, basically. And this is 0.143 cubic foot. As I mentioned, we need to have this phase diagram completed before we calculate all these ratios. And um, so the next unknowns we're going to solve on this phase diagram is the volume of water. So I'm going to focus on this volume of water first. So this is a commonly used technique. On the phase diagram, because the unit weight of water is a constant, so you know it's 62.4, which means if you know either side, if you know the weight, you can always solve for the volume. If you know the volume, you can always solve the, for the weight. Because we know unit weight of water, by definition, That's weight of water over volume water. 
and this is a constant, 62.4 uh, PCF. In, in this example, we know the weight of water, so we can solve for the volume of water. And this is 2.55 over 62.4. So we know the volume of water in this case is 0 0.041 cubic foot. So that's 0 0.041. So we have the volume of water. And then the next unknown we can solve for is the volume of solids. And for this example, we are given the GS, the specific gravity. And specific gravity, by definition, unit weight of solids over unit weight of water. And this unit weight of solids, again, basic definition, weight of solids over volume of solids times unit weight of water. And from this, we can solve for volume of solids. So that's weight of solids over specific gravity and then unit weight of water. That is 14.98 over 2.7, unit weight of water 62.4. So the volume of solids in this case 0.089. So we can put this value on this phase diagram. Once we have the volume of the solid, vol volume of water, and we know the total volume, then this VA here, volume of air, this is total volume minus volume of water minus volume of solids. And this is 0.013. So that's the most important step in solving weight volume relationship problems. Is this a complete phase diagram? So once we have this phase diagram completed, then anything else is just basic definitions. What we are looking for in this problem are the moisture content or water content. So this water content, one of the six basic definitions, weight of water over weight of solid and expressed in percentage times 100%. And the weight of water, weight of solids, we have them on the face diagram, so just plug in numbers. So this is 17%. And then the dry unit weight, gamma D, again, basic definition. So that's weight of solids over total volume. And this is 105 PCF or pound per cubic foot. The moisture unit weight, basic definition again. So total weight over total volume, 17.53 over 0.143. And this is um, 123. And then a couple other quantities, porosity N. BV over V. So the volume of the voids basically is uh, VA plus VW. So that's volume of air, which is 0 0.013 plus volume of water, 0 0.41, 0 0.041. The porosity in this case is 0.38 or 38% if you express it in percentage. And the last uh, quantity we're looking for, degree saturation. Volume of water over volume of void, 100%. And this is 0 0.041 divided by volume of voids. in 
So that's the uh, degree saturation. That's the last, the last unknown we are looking for. So that's example one. Really, as I mentioned again, the key in solving any weight volume relationships is to complete this phase diagram. So once you have all the weights and volumes completed on the phase diagram, everything else are just basic definitions.